Hi everyone, so for this video, I will discuss the trigonometric integral. So there are uh, cases wherein uh, we have powers of uh, the trigonometric functions and uh, there are ways to solve this uh, cases. And before we deal with the techniques you know, for these examples, we have to first review the important trigonometric identities and also the the first uh, trigonometric identity that we should be familiar with is the Pythagorean identity so we have three and uh we have also the double angle identities and half angle identities so for the Pythagorean identities the one uh, thing that you should remember here is that uh given a triangle with uh, let's say an angle theta with an opposite of a uh, an adjacent of b and a uh, hypotenuse of c so if we create a relationship between these three we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared through the Pythagorean theorem and if we divide this actually by let's say for example a uh, so if we divide this all by a as we can see here we have uh, one plus we have b over a and then we can square this no and then we have a c over a and then square this so what is this identity if we could uh we could remember no so if we have b over a that is the adjacent over the opposite so basically we have one plus cotangent squared theta and then this one is uh, the hypotenuse over do uh, over the opposite so this will be the cosecant no? so we have cosecant squared theta so we have this formula in mind so if you try dividing this Pythagorean identity or sorry the, this Pythagorean theorem of this triangle then uh, you can derive for the formulas in the Pythagorean identities so uh, you can try dividing this by b squared or c squared also and then for the double angle identities uh we have the following so where is this derived from so the general formula that we should also be familiar with is the sum of two angles you know if we ha uh, we have let's say sine a plus b uh, for example your angle is a and b or we could capitalize this now to be uh much more formal so this is equal to what no so we have sine a cos b plus cos a sine b and let's say a is equal to b so we can see that a is equal to b if this is a equals is equal to b if sine a plus a is also the same as sine to a then uh, we can substitute here equivalent uh angles no so we have sine a cos a and then plus cos a sine a so if we simplify this since multiplication is commutative then we can write this as uh, sine a cos a multiplied by 2 Ayan, so we have sine 2a and this will be your answer Ayan. okay and then for the half angle identities uh the only difference here no so if if you want to remember this uh they have the same formula no so if you have sine squared theta then it will be equal to one minus cosine two theta over two so the difference between these two formula is just sine no? the positive and the negative so for sine uh you can remember sine as a sin so it is negative no okay <laughs> and then positive if it is cosine cosine okay um let's move on to the methodology so uh let's say we want to integrate a function that looks like this where m and n are integer powers so m and n are integer powers greater than uh zero okay so how do we solve that we can solve this using these three cases no? so there are three possible cases that we can solve so the first case is when the sign power is odd and positive so this this m is odd and positive and uh what should we do if this is true we can uh save one sign factor meaning we should factor out one sign factor and then convert the remaining factors to cosine so if this is the scenario 
Okay? So, what does this mean, no? So, 2K plus 1 basically means it is an odd number. So, if you have 2K only, 2K means uh, even. If you have uh, 2K plus 1, then usually it is uh, odd, no? We pertain to an odd number. So, if you do this, no, we, we just want to save one sign factor, meaning we could factor out one of the sign, no? So, we can see here that we factored out one sign uh, power. And then we can we can convert the remaining factors to cosines. So we will set aside everything here. And then we will change this now into powers of cosine. So where did this come from? So this came from the uh, trigonometric identity. So we have what? So the trigonometric identity is uh, sorry, uh, that we should be familiar with is the Pythagorean th uh, theorem. So, sine squared u plus cosine squared u is equal to 1, wherein we can say that cosine squared u is equal to 1 minus sine squared u, and uh, that would be the same for sine squared u. This is equal to 1 minus cosine squared u. So, this is the identity that we used to get this. So, after doing this, you can just go and solve this using u substitution. Or actually, you, you have to first, uh, I forgot, we, we should, uh, uh, we can expand this first and then distribute this cosine n. Okay, we, we will later solve an example of this. For the second case, if cosine is positive and odd, so we, we only want to check for the cosine power, you know, for this case, if this cosine power is odd, so meaning you have 2k plus 1, we just save one factor, you know, of uh, cosine so basically we factor out one of the cosine so we, we reduce this by one so we only have two times k and then after that convert the remaining factors to sine so uh, if this is cosine then this will now be sine and after doing that you can expand this if this is raised to k you can expand this and you can also substitute or sorry you can distribute this sine raised to m for each of the terms here and then you can use u substitution to solve for this integral okay and the last one when the powers of sine and cosine are even so again if it is 2k or 2j it means that it is even or, or the powers is even and uh positive then no? so what should we do here we should make use of the repeated half angle formulas so um uh actually it should be k no uh, i should should uh, consider this as a uh, uh, yeah okay so that will be it no? so uh, we can just use a uh, uh, distribution of this variable and then we can use u substitution to solve it so moving on uh, we have the evaluation of this integral so how do we evaluate this integral if we have this problem then uh, we can let uh this m and n as 3 and 2 right so if we have a sign that is positive and odd so regardless of the power of the cosine we can solve for this so since this is uh case one no? so case one then what we should do here is factor out one sign so we have uh sine squared x and then factor out one sign so we have sine x and then cosine squared x dx. And then after that, we can uh, change everything no, else. So we just set this aside and convert all the remaining factors of sine into cosine. So this will now be equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. And then uh, I can just simplify this as sine x cosine squared x dx. Okay, so the last thing you should do is you should distribute this to each of this so we have uh, the integral of cosine squared x minus cosine to the fourth power x and then sine x dx yeah so at this point you can actually use already the u substitution so as you can see if we let u is equal to uh, cosine x and then du is equal to uh, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x dx then we have dx is equal to du over negative sine 
so uh we have to change this and also this so this will now be the equal to the integral of u squared minus u to the fourth power and then sine x and then we have dx as du over negative sine x yeah. okay so this will now be cancelled out and we have a negative sign here so we have negative the integral of u squared minus u to the fourth power du so using the power rule we can just integrate this uh, we can just integrate the, 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 the terms independently so this will be u cube over 3 okay so there should be a, a brace here or a parenthesis and then you have u raised to 5 over 5 and then plus 1 so distributing this negative sign we have a negative u cube no so what is u so cosine x so we have negative cosine cube x all over 3 plus so negative times negative is positive so we have cosine fifth to the fifth power x over 5 uh, not plus 1 no but plus c and then plus c so this will be your final answer okay that's it the next one we have another problem here so uh the first thing we should do now if we have this case we have to check the powers if uh whether they are uh, which of them is odd and if they are both even so as you can see this is odd so therefore we should use case 2 so the case 2 here is that we have uh, to to set aside one cosine factor so sine raised to x uh, 6x and then cosine squared x and then cosine x dx so after that what we can do here is uh, change everything no into cosine ah sorry change the cosine pala, no? sorry change the cosine into sine so this will be equal to i think i should use the red uh, pen no so this will now be equal to 1 minus sine squared x and then the set aside uh, cos x dx so what should we do here we can now distribute this no sine raised to 6 or, or sine raised to the 6 power x so this will be equal to sine raised to the 6 power of x minus sine raised to the 8 power of x and then uh, cosine x dx yeah. so u here no we can already use u substitution here so u is equal to sine x and du is equal to uh, cosine x dx so dx is actually you can just change this directly now as you can see cosine x dx is equal to du so even though uh, i usually use dx is equal to uh, d over cosine x we can do this directly, you know, so this will be du now. So this will be equal to u raised to 6 minus u raised to 8 times du. Yeah, so I'll just change this to red again. Uh, just to imply that I uh, used, I, I, I uh, changed the variable from x to u. So uh, we can just solve this using integration by uh, uh, the power rule. So we have u raised to 7 over 7 minus u raised to 9 over 9 and then plus c so what is u so we have sine x so this will be sine raised to 7 x over 7 minus sine raised to 9 x over 9 plus c it's that simple ano? okay so the last one for the last example we have this problem so if they are both even then we have to use case 3. So what should we do here? We should make use of the half angle formula. So this will now be equal to 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. And then we have 1 uh, plus cosine 2x over 2. And then the x. So what should we do here? We can factor out the constants here. So we have 1 fourth. And then we can use the FOIL method. So we have uh, binomial multiplied by another binomial. We have 1. And then, uh, so outer, and then first, outer, and then inner. So this will, ju this will just cancel out. And then we have 1 minus cosine to the fourth, uh, 2x. Okay. 
and then dx. Ayan. So, uh, at this point, is this integratable? Yes. Is this integratable? Um, no. No, right? So, if this is not integratable, then we have to use the the, the same rule again. So, um, we have here, sorry, I, 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 I. Okay, we have to, ah, sorry, it should be squared, no? It should be squared, right? Oh, so it should be squared. Sorry. So, at this point, this can actually be changed into something that we can integrate, right? Right? Actually, we have uh, a way to simplify this. Actually, you can, there are different ways to do this, no? You can, uh, you can... You can substitute 1 or, or sine squared 2x, right? Or, uh, anyways, <laughs> we can just use the repeated uh, cosine 2x or the half angle formula. So, this is uh, also equal to, we have 1 minus, we have uh, 1, um, one plus, uh cos 4x okay so we keep on doubling the angle no so if this is 2 now we have to double the angle and then over 2 yeah okay uh, sorry yeah and then dx so at this point uh, i think this is integratable now so we can just simplify this first no so we have one fourth again and then the integral of one so we can simplify this we have minus one half so, I can just simplify this, no? So, 1 minus 1 half, this will be 3 halves. Is that okay? Oh, sorry, uh, it, sh it should be 1 half only, no? And then, plus cosine 4x over 2. And then, we have dx. So, is this integratable? Yes. Is this integratable? Yes. We can factor out the 2. Yes, we can factor out the 2. So, uh, just factoring out the 2, no? We have 1 over 8 integral of uh, 1 plus cosine 4x dx set so this is integratable this is integratable but uh this case we have to use u substitution so u is equal to 4x du is equal to uh for dx so therefore dx is equal to d over 4 so this will be equal to 1 8 uh, the integral of 1 plus uh, we have here cosine u and then dx is equal to Actually, uh, a better way to do this is to uh, distribute this first. No, sorry. So, plus dx and then plus 1, 8. And then the integral of cosine uh, u. So, u is uh, variable. And then dx is du over 4. And then simplify this. We have uh, the integral of dx is x. So, we have 1, 8, x. And then minus. Uh, it should be minus, right? Oh, sorry, I forgot the negative sign, no? So, it should be minus. Oh, sorry. Cosine, and then this should be minus. So, we have 1, 8 over, sorry, uh, times 4. So, this should be 1 over 32. And then, the integral of cosine u is sine. So, we have sine u. Then, therefore, uh, the final answer should be 1, 8, x uh minus one third one over thirty two sine uh four x plus c okay so that's it so uh let me just check okay we have this right okay so uh another example here we have this integral um uh, we have an odd power of sine and then even power of cosine. So, we have to use case 1. So, this is just a little bit longer than uh, the first example. So, let's try doing this again. So, for case 1, we have to set aside one sine factor. So, we have sine raised to 6x and then a sine factor is sine x and cosine squared x dx. So, the next thing we should do is to convert this into cosine, you know. 
So before we can convert this to cosine, we have to first uh, change this into sine squared x and then cube. So why is that? Because the identity is in sine squared, not sine raised to 6. No? So with this, we can convert this now to 1 minus cosine squared x. So again, we have sine x and cosine squared x dx. Okay, so this will be 1 minus cosine squared x. And then sine x cosine uh, squared x dx. Yeah. Okay, so what's the next thing? We have to do what? <laughs> There's a lot of uh, computation here. You know? So uh, the easy way to do this is... Hmm. Um, hmm. we can expand this no? raised by 3 or maybe a trigonometric substitution mm, I know it not uh, use substitution hmm. so I think we should just expand this one no? since this will be challenging to, to integrate still so if this is u We really have to expand, you know. Well, one quick way to expand a binomial, if you if you can remember, is we can use the Pascal's triangle, you know. So the Pascal's triangle is uh, when you keep adding one, you no. Know? each of this so we have one three and then three and then one so this is for uh, a binomial that is x plus y raised to zero this is just x plus y raised to one this is x plus y squared this is x plus y cubed now uh, one thing to notice here is that your function uh, or sorry your x here no your x uh, term is one and then your y term is negative cosine squared x. So if you have different signs here, then we should consider uh, an alternating sign. Ano? So the the first one should be uh, sorry uh, the expansion of this. Therefore, so yeah, let me just explain this. No, so using the Pascal's triangle, we can expand this one into x cubed plus 3x squared y plus uh, 3xy squared plus y cubed. So if this is your x and this is your y, then this will be 1 cubed, right? Plus we have 3 times x is 1 squared and then we have y, so negative cosine squared x. And then plus 3, right? 3x, so x is 1. And then y squared, so we have negative uh, cosine squared x uh, and then squared. And then we have plus y cubed, so we have negative cos squared x cubed. And then uh, that is just the first, uh, this is just the first portion. And then we have to multiply this uh, sine x cosine squared x dx. Yeah. So if we simplify this, we have uh, an integral here that is 1 and then this will be negative 3 cosine squared x minus, uh, is it minus? So this will become positive since this is squared. So plus 3 cosine uh, squared and then multiplied by 2. So this will be cosine to the fourth power and then cube. So if this is cube, then this will be negative. So we have 1, uh, sorry, uh, minus cosine 2 times 3 is 6, so uh, cosine 6. And then sine x cosine squared x dx. So the, the, the next step that we should do is to distribute this cosine squared here. Or uh, you can actually do already the u substitution at this point. No? So this will now be equal to, so I'll just fit this right here. No? Fit this in right here. So we have cosine squared x minus 3 cosine to the 4th power x plus 3 cosine to the 6 power x, and then minus cosine raised to the 8 x. And then we have sine x dx. Yeah. 
Okay. So, therefore, we can, if you use u substitution, so this will become uh, u squared minus 3u4 plus 3u6 minus u8. And then sine x will be uh, du. So, uh, actually, negative du. Ano? So, if we let u as cosine x, then du is negative sine x dx. So, dx is du over negative sine x. Yeah. So, substituting this, we have uh, we have uh, u squared. Sorry, not u squared, but uh, this is just 1, right? So, we have... Uh, sorry, it, it is actually u squared, no? So, so, this will be u squared. Sorry, uh, where is my pen? Yeah. So, u squared... And then uh, we have, uh, what is this? We have negative 3 cosines to the 4th power. So this would be u to the 4th. And then plus we have 3 cosine raised to the 6. So this would be u raised to 6. And then minus uh, cosine raised to 8. So u raised to 8. And then we have uh, sine x multiplied by du over negative sine x. Yeah, so we have a negative sign and then cancel this sine x. So equals to negative or we can just distribute this, ne this negative sign here so that we can just uh, simplify this already. You know? So negative u squared plus 3u raised to the fourth. I'm just checking now. 3u raised to the fourth minus 3u raised to the sixth plus u raised to eight and then du. So what's next? The next part here is to integrate this using the power rule. So this will be equal to negative u raised to 3 over 3. Plus we have u raised, uh, 3 u raised to 5 over 5. Minus 3 u raised to 7 over 7. Plus u raised to 9 over 9. And then plus c. So simplifying this, we know that u is cosine x. So we have negative cosine cube x over 3 plus 3 over 5. Uh... Uh, or I will just write this as 3 cosine raised to the 5 x over 5 minus 3 cosine 7 7 and then plus cosine 9 and then over 9 plus c. Okay, so that will be all. This will be your final answer. Okay, so what's next? Okay, so we have already exhausted all the examples for the first part. So for the second part, we will now uh, integrate. Uh, the given function that has a power or that have a power of uh, secant and tangent or products of secant and tangent that has the powers of m and n that are integers and positive. So the first case that we can solve is when secant is positive and even. So if uh, secant is positive and even, then what we can do here is we can save secant squared u factor, no? So we can just factor this uh, out, no? So this will become 2k uh, minus 2 to factor out this secant squared. So if you simplify this 2k minus 2, so 2k minus 2 is also equal to 2 times k minus 1. So we have k minus 1 here and this is the 2. Okay? And then after doing that, uh, we just want to convert every remaining factor to tangent. So, the secant here will become the tangent. And then at this point, you can also distribute the, uh, what do you call this? <laughs> the tangent, no? Distribute this to the tangent. And then you can use u-substitution. For the second case, the power of tangent is positive and odd. So, save one secant u tangent u factor and convert the remaining factors to secant. So, if you have this uh, example, then... Uh, you just have to factor out secant u and tangent u. So if this tangent is again odd, so remove one here, so this will become 2 raised to k, which is uh, tangent squared u raised to k, and then subtract this by 1, so we have here negative 1, so m minus 1, and then this will become secant u tangent u. And then after that, you just have to convert everything into secant, except, uh, of course, the the, the factored out second u tangent u factor. And after this, you can expand this if this is raised to some power of 2 or 3 or whatever, and then distribute this back, and then use u substitution. Okay, 
And then the last one, if there's only uh, a tangent uh, uh, power that is positive and even, then what you can do is just convert this to secant. No? So converting this to secant will yield this answer. Okay, so you can uh, always factor out this tangent by 2 and then and so on until uh, you have a uh, secant uh, in every of your uh, in every way of your terms. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, try solving the first case. So for the first case, you have to have an uh, an even secant. No? So if this is even, then this will be case 1. So regardless of this, no, so if this is square root, it doesn't really matter. If this is not an integer, it actually it can actually still be solvable. It is still solvable. So this will be case one. So for case one, we can just factor out this uh, secant squared u. No? And then sorry, uh this is x. So secant squared x and then tangent uh squared x dx. So after that, you set aside one secant squared factor, you have to convert everything else that is secant into tangent. So this will be equal to, uh, we have one, no, sorry, uh, tangent x pala, no, tangent squared x plus one. Okay. And then secant squared x and then tangent uh, squared x dx. Okay. So after doing this, you can distribute this to each of the term here. So we have uh, tangent to the fourth power x and then plus tangent squared x and then multiplied by secant squared x dx. So at this point, as you can see, we can use already the u substitution. So if we let u as tangent x, then uh, the derivative of this will be secant squared x dx. So as you can see, if this is the case, we can just change this into du. So, uh, we have an integral of u raised to the fourth plus uh, u, u squared. And then, uh, the second squared x dx is equal to du. So, simplifying this, we have, uh, sorry, we have, um, we have u raised to 5 over 5 plus u cubed over 3 and then plus c. So, simplifying this, we have u raised to 5. So, yung u natin is uh, tangent x. So, we have tangent uh, tangent tangent to the fifth x over 5 plus tangent cube x over 5 plus c. So this will be your final answer. Okay, the next one here. So if the tangent uh, power is odd and positive, so therefore this will be case 2, regardless of what, what power is this, no? So, therefore, what we should do here is to factor out secant and tangent. Oh, so, remove one here, remove one here. So, this will be secant x tangent squared x. And then, this will be just secant x tangent x. So, we factor out both secant and tangent x. And then, what we should do here is to convert everything that is tangent into secant. So, this will be equal to secant x and then this will be secant squared x minus 1 right so secant squared x minus 1 and then secant x tangent x yeah okay so what should we do here we can distribute this no so we just set aside this one for for what no for u substitution so distribute this we have secant uh, to the fourth power x minus secant x and then uh, we have secant x tangent x yeah so u here is secant x then therefore du is secant x tangent x so the x formula no so as you can see here this will be equal to this so we can just change this to du and then change this as u okay so we have the integral of u to the fourth power minus u Right? And then, uh, this will be just du. Okay. Ah, sorry. This should be cube, no? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This should be cube. Yeah. So, simplifying this, this, this will be u raised to the fourth power over 4 minus u squared over 2 and then plus c. So, u, u raised to the fourth power 
Uh, we can just change the variables again from u to x. So this would be second. Uh, second to the fourth x over 4 minus second squared uh, x over 2 and then plus c. Okay. That's it. Okay. So as you can see, uh, this case is also suitable for case 1. You know? As you can see, this is also uh, applicable for case 1. No? So uh, if we try doing this using the case 1, guys, then uh, so yeah, let's try doing this using the case 1. And let's compare the answers. No? So we have the integral again. Okay, using case uh, 1, secant squared x and tangent cube x dx. So as you can see here, if this is case 1, then uh, since this is an even factor, now we already have a factor of this, we can just use u substitution directly. <laughs> so the u here is tangent x, so du is secant uh, squared x dx. So since this is equal to this du okay therefore we have uh this is equal to so this one will be du so this combination of this will be du and then tangent cube x will be u cube so if we simplify this we have u to the fourth power over four plus c wherein this is tangent to the fourth power x over four plus c so as you can see we have a different answer from this so why is that is that correct or did we do something uh or do we have an error here so actually uh in in terms of trigonometric function since we have a lot of different uh trigonometric identities you know both of this uh answers should be correct but in different forms so for example we can actually expand this uh we, no we can expand this so let's say this is um uh we can uh we can write this as tangent squared x and then squared over four right so what is tangent squared x so tangent squared x is secant squared diba? so secant squared x minus one and then squared over four plus c so if we simplify this yeah so simplifying this we have Second to the fourth power x, and then we have uh, uh, first outer inner, so we have minus two second squared x, right? Ah, uh, sorry, yes, this is true, and then plus one, and then over four plus c. So if we simplify this, we will get second to the fourth power x over four, and then this will be one half second uh, squared x, no? so second squared x over two. And then plus one fourth plus c. But uh, as you can see, you know, we have a similar answer, but we have here a one fourth. So if we have a constant here, we can actually absorb this constants through our constant of integration. So this is also the same as uh, secant to the fourth power x over four minus secant squared x over two plus c. So this will still be an answer. So we have two different forms, but uh, they are the same thing. Okay, so one last uh, integral for secant tangent or product of secant and tangent. So this will be equal to what? No, so we have uh, only a tangent uh, trigonometric function, and this is an even function as well. No? So we have uh, case three. So for case three, what should we do? No. We can factor out this indefinitely. So we have tangent uh, squared x. So factor out the tangent squared x every time. And then hopefully convert this into, or one of this into secant. So we have here integral of tangent uh, squared x. Then we have uh, secant squared, uh, sorry, secant squared x minus 1. And then dx. Okay. So, if we distribute this, this is integrable, right? This is integratable. This is integratable now. But, uh, we still have the tangent squared x. So, maybe we have to simplify this further later. 
So if we simplify this, we have tangent squared x, second squared x, minus tangent squared x, and then the x, yeah. So for this case, we can actually solve for this already, you know. So I will just separate this so that uh, we have to only solve for one integral or last. So this is actually integratable already. If this is, uh, if u is equal to tangent, the derivative of tangent uh, is secant squared x. So this will become u squared du, right? So this is okay already. But for this one, we have a problem. So we cannot integrate this uh, in this form. So what we have to do again is to utilize the factorization of tangent squared. Uh, sorry, the factorization. But the trigonometric identity of tangent squared x. So this will now be again second squared x minus 1 so this will be equal to uh rewrite this one again uh this will be equal to second squared x minus 1 and then the x so simplifying this we have um so we have negative integral of second squared x dx so this is positive, no? So negative is negative is positive. So plus the integral of dx. So at this point, we can now integrate this individually. We just have to solve this uh, using uh, u substitution first. So u here, for only this case, no? We don't have to change this. The integral of this is already known and also for this one. So this will be, uh, the u here will be tangent x. Derivative of tangent x is second squared x dx. So, this will now be equal to the integral of u squared and then du. And then minus the integral of secant squared uh, x dx plus uh, the integral of dx. So, simplifying this, we have u cube over 3 minus uh, the, the integral here is tangent x. And then plus, so the integral of dx is x and then plus c. So, u cube here will become tangent cube x over 3 and then minus tangent x plus x plus c so this will be your final answer okay so that's it now uh there are cases where uh the angles are different no so what we did here the one of the criteria that we should also consider is that their angles must be the same so when the angles are different, we should consider a different uh, methodology or uh, strategy. So for this one, we can utilize the product to sum formula. And also, what is the product to sum formula? So let's say we have sine A and cosine B. We can uh, uh, simplify this uh, function into this. So we have one half of sine A minus B plus sine A plus B and so on so that will be true for uh, sine a times sine b for for forms like this and for forms like this so we only have three cases for this i usually don't remember this uh the product sum formula is derived from from uh, the sum and difference of two angles actually but anyways uh, you can remember this as well no? so for this integral how do we do this now so since their angles are different, then we have to use a different strategy. So the strategy with, that we should use is the, 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 the product of some identity. So we have sine A cosine B is equal to one half of uh, what? No? So we have uh, sine, right? So sine, we have A minus B, okay? And then plus we have sine uh, a plus B. Yeah. Okay, so what is A here? So A here is equal to 4x. B here is equal to 5x. So substituting the value, we can change this, uh, sorry, this specific function into this form. So at this form, we can now integrate the sign. This will be relatively easy. So now, uh, going back again to the problem, we have the integral of 1 half and then uh, we have sine A minus B. So we have 4X minus BX, uh, sorry, 5X. We have negative X. And then plus 
we have sine a plus b. So, 4x plus 5x, we have 9x and then dx. Okay, we can factor out 1 half. So, 1 half and then we can integrate uh, each of this individually. Okay, and then plus 1 half. So, we can distribute also the, the 1 half, no? And then sine uh, 9x dx. Okay. So, for this, we let u as negative x. So, du is negative dx. Uh, for this one, uh, we can let w or v. We can use v here. So, v here is equal to um, 9x. So, dx is equal to 9 dx. So, dx is d over 9. Uh, sorry, it should be dv. Ayan. So, 1 half the integral of sine. Sorry, there is no dx here. So, sine uh, u and the negative du. And then we have plus 1 half of the integral of sine uh, u. And then we have uh, 1 over or du over 9. Actually, this should be v. Sorry. dv over 9. Ayan. So, this will now be equal to the integral of sine u is negative cosine u. So, negative times negative, this will become positive again. So, we have 1 half cosine u, right? Plus, we have 1 half uh, sine v. So, the integral of this is negative cosine. And then, this 9 is multiplied by this. So, we have minus, right? Minus 1 over 18. And then, cosine 9. Sorry, 9, nine but uh, cosine v. And then, plus c. So, simplifying this, we have 1 half of cosine uh, negative x minus 1 over 18 cosine 9x. Well, actually, we can actually utilize uh, trigonometric identity where when we have cosine of negative x, this is equal to cosine positive x. So, we can also rewrite this as 1 half cosine x minus 1 over 18 cosine 9x plus c. E. So, this will be your final answer. Okay, so we have one last, no? So we have one last uh, topic for trigonometric integrals. So for definite integrals of uh, powers of sine or cosine alone, so it, it should be alone, no? So for sine and cosine alone, when we want to find the definite integral from 0 to pi over 2, 0 to pi over 2 only, so this is only limited to the limit 0 to pi over 2, guys, okay? So, how do we do this? If we have this form, okay, and n here, uh, or, or, or the exponent is, is uh, greater than or equal to 3, then the way that we can uh, evaluate this is this pattern. So, we have 2 over 3 times 4 over 6, oh, sorry, 4 over 5, 6 over 7. So, as you can see, there is a pattern here, 2, two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, until what? Until uh, we get 2n. So, if n here is, let's say, uh, well, it, it should be odd, no? So, let's say this is 5. So, we should stop here. So, this will be your, your definite integral. Okay, and then if it is even, so regardless if it is sine or cosine, no, they have, uh, they are the same thing because of the symmetry of their uh, functions from 0 to pi over 2. So, if they are even, or if n here is even, then we will now start with 1. No? So we have 1, and then 2, and then so on, until n. No? And then multiply this by pi over 2. Okay, so again, this Wallis formula is only limited, will only be limited for limits from 0 to pi over 2. So if this is different, then you cannot apply this Wallis formula. So this is a shortcut method for for definite integrals involving only sine or cosine no powers okay so uh let's have uh, an example here so how do we evaluate this so always remember that this is also equal to uh 0 to pi over 2 integral of sine x dx yeah so therefore we can also uh, solve this equivalently and the answer to this uh, uh, at first glance this should be obvious that this should be 1 no? so always remember that the integral 
of sin x dx or cosine x dx from 0 to pi over 2 should be 1. So if uh, only if n is greater than or equal to 2, then we have uh, a formula here. No? So uh, how about for this one? So this is the same as this. So this will be equal to this. So therefore, the answer is also 1. So now we have this problem. So cosine raised to the fi to, to the fifth power. So if this is odd, I know odd, odd, yeah. So therefore, this is equal to. We have two over three. We have four over five. That's it. No. So the the if 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 n is equal to five, then it should stop at five here. So simplifying this, we have an answer of eight. And then over 15. Okay, next one. So if this is even, and then again, this is from 0 to 2, pi over 2, then the answer should be 1 over 2, 3 over 4, and then 5 over 6. So if we have 6 already, we stop there. For even functions, no, or even uh, powers, then we have to also multiply pi over 2. So the final answer here can be simplified. So we have uh, this can be simplified into one half, right? So this would be two. What else? Is that it? So this will be your. Uh, uh, what? Okay, okay, number. <laughs> so we have pi by over. So, 2 times 4, 8 times 2, 16 times 2, 32. So, this will be your answer. Okay, so evaluate this integral. So, how do we do this now? Uh, um, we do not have a, a, a definite integral from 0 to pi over 2. So, we cannot use this anymore. But, as you can see here, if we try letting this as u, no? so if we let this as u, so x over 2 is u, then du is equal to uh, 1 half dx. So dx will be 2 du. Then we can rewrite this integral as the integral from 0 to pi, but uh, we will change the formula as well later. So we have cosine raised to 8, and then this will become u. And then we have 2 du. Right? So for the change of limits, now if we change the variable, we should change the limit as well. So for this one, we have to use this as well. So we have uh, um, 0 over 2. And then in here, we have uh, pi. No? So we just substitute the value here. So we have pi, pi over 2. So this simplifies into, we have 2 here. Now don't forget the 2 here. So, to the integral from 0 to pi over 2, cosine raised to 8, the u, du. So, as you can see, we have, we have still, we have still gauged this as, uh, as this, no? So, therefore, we can still use the Wallis formula. So, for the Wallis formula, uh, this is an even number. So, therefore, so don't forget the constant here. So, we have uh, to start with 1, ano? And then 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5, and then 6, and then 7, and then 8. And then don't forget the last one, pi over 2. Okay, so can we simplify something here? So we can simplify this. So this would be 2. We can fact, we can cancel this out. So the remaining uh, uh, values here will be 5 times 7, so 35 pi. And then we have 4 times 2, so 8 times 8, 16 times 2 is, uh, huh? Sorry, times 8 pala, no? So we have 8 times 8, that is 64. And then times 2, this will be 128. So this will be your final answer. Okay, so do you have another, uh, so that will be the last for this uh, video. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you learned, you learned something uh, today. Uh, good luck during class. Thank you guys. And... Again, see you guys in class.